Hey everyone, welcome to Amateur Adventures. Today's video is going to be the 4,000 mile review on my KTM 890. Uh, just want to go over the things I like, things I don't like, some of the upgrades I've done. Uh, maybe this will help you in your decision to buy one. Maybe this will push you away from it. Who knows? So on my phone I have a list, so you'll see me uh, referencing that. Some of the upgrades I've done is the rock roller intake probably the most beneficial upgrade and that is the most recent one i've done so i'll go over that a little bit also i've done the tusk panniers with the tusk pannier racks the tusk top rack which i will show you the aero decat garmin gps the van hanches gps mount probably pronounced that wrong the quad lock mount with the wireless charger and the gyro mount and aftermarket tire pressure sensor monitor. So here is the rock roll intake. Pretty happy with it so far. Only have probably maybe 100 miles with it. The quad lock, Garmin GPS mount. And, and this is the aftermarket tire pressure monitoring system. comes on tells you temp temperature and pressure and it gives you a battery display of the display mount not the monitors himself and then over here I can show you the decat little guys right in there I don't know how well you can see that and then the tusk pannier racks and then if you're wondering this is what the sensors look like Let's go over some of the things I like. Off-road performance. Off-road performance on this thing is excellent. The weight balance is fantastic. You really don't feel the 470 pounds that the bike weighs when you ride it. Um, kind of just goes where you put it. You don't really have to work too hard to keep the bike up. Um, unless you're at super, super low speeds and you're doing like tight technical stuff. But even then it's not as heavy as you think it would feel. Um, referencing my DRZ 400 that I had before this, the bike feels almost lighter than that. Um, I'm going to put in a video of me actually riding this on a track and hitting a couple jumps. Uh, bike did fantastic, suspension did great, did great as well. Uh, I can show you, I'll add this in the video. Um, 45 miles per gallon, and that's pretty much average if you cycle through. Um, trip two is longer, and out of 905 miles, it's 43, I get 43 miles per gallon. So that's pretty low, that's without the intake. Uh, with the intake, I saw an average of two or three miles per gallon increase, which is pretty substantial. So I will do a long-term review of the intake. Um, I'm doing the Northeast BDR in August, so that will really kind of test my limits with the bike and all the aftermarket stuff I've done. Um, suspension. The video of uh, me jumping it and on a track and me riding on an MX track in a dual sport class. Uh, it's pretty good. Got six overall out of ten people. So, I mean, out of all regular, those lightweight single cylinder dual sport bikes, I think that's pretty pretty impressive. Uh, buddy of mine races 790. He got second overall in both motos. So, um, factory handguards. I think the factory handguards of this are excellent. I know they're plastic and some people not might, might not like them because of that, but I've dropped it a couple times, haven't had an issue. Um, fashion side one does have a little crack, but I mean, they're plastic. It is to be expected, but they came on there and they were free. I guess not free, but they were on the bike when you bought it. Uh, the headlight. Headlight's awesome. Love the headlight. I have no complaints about the headlight. Uh, nighttime riding is pretty decent. Uh, I did have to adjust it, but I mean, whatever. Pretty, pretty simple to do. Uh, easy oil changes. Um, oil changes are pretty easy on this thing. You've got two spots to drain down here and then the filter. And that's pretty much it. Just clean the screens out. You don't need to replace them. Um, check, keep an eye on the O-rings. Keep uh, spare O-rings and screens on hand just in case you need to replace them. But a little bit of brake clean or you know parts washer. Just clean all the metal shavings stuff off and that's pretty much it. 
Um, going back to upgrades I did because I forgot about this. The outdoor motor tech. Skid plate. Pretty good, pretty beefy. Um, have hit a couple of big rocks with it and I love it. It's one of the things I will go through into my dislike section of this bike is the factory skid plate, but we'll get to that when I go there. The traction control, ABS, and brakes kind of all tie in together. Fantastic, no complaints. Uh, the front was making a little bit of noise when I first got the bike after about 500 miles and brought it back to the dealership and that just ended up being the forks being misaligned causing misalignment with the brake calipers I guess. I'm not 100% sure they were kind of vague when I picked the bike up about that but I haven't had an issue since and that's 4,000 miles on this bike. Um, traction control and off-road mode so I do not have rally mode on this bike. Uh, I have not the, the tech package yet. I am planning on doing it I just haven't had time and nor do I want to spend five six hundred dollars to have it done because I think it should come on the bike from the factory. At least have cruise control. Uh, the cruise control not being there sucks. I had a switch for it, but what's the sense of having a switch for something if it's not going to be there? It doesn't isn't functional. Besides that, uh, off road mode and traction control in off road mode I think is fantastic. It allows the perfect amount of slip, the perfect amount of uh, aid in the traction control. The ABS is great. No complaints about the ABS. I like that you can shut it right off um, and off road ABS and gets the rear tire completely off. I do like the ABS in the front. That's just me. Some people don't like ABS in the front when you're off road. But it does add a lot of comfort and maybe adds in the, or aids in the sense of confidence that you have in this bike. And then the seat. The seat I absolutely love. It is probably the best seat I've had on a factory bike, or a factory seat. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, now, one thing that I have here is iffy, is the windshield. It's not great, it's not terrible, but it could be better. If it angled maybe a little bit farther forward, I think it would push a lot more wind up. Now, I'm 6'2", so... A lot of the shorter riders may not have this issue, but I get a lot of wind buffering like right here. Not a fan of that. That kind of kind of sucks. But in the high high spot, I not a fan of it. But I also don't love it. So I guess I'm right in the middle with that. And then on the dislikes, I kind of touched on this earlier. The factory cruise control. I would love to tell you how it is. Can't tell you because I don't have it. Like I said, I think if you're going to give me the switch for it should be working you pay enough money for these bikes nowadays that and a lot of the other bikes come with it as a factory option or standard option so i am a little salty about that but it is what it is mirrors mirrors i hate they're useless you do get good vision out of them going down the road but they're not they're just bulky in the way and this being the r model not the rally but the r model it's about to go off road so not being able to like pivot them out of the way or just they're in the way going through trails you're going to hit them on, on stuff uh, and then turn signals i haven't broken one yet i said i put it down a couple times but they're not led but i guess not being led i guess it's cheaper to change but i don't know everything else is led on this the brake light headlight so it just makes sense to have those leds speaking of there is a 12 volt uh, flasher relay under the headlight or above the headlight actually you have to take the headlight out to get to it I had a problem where that actually came unplugged it's just a little female um, connector that actually came out of the plastic holder and that made my directionals not work so kind of shitty but I mean I guess that's just uh, cheap plastic nowadays uh, one thing I do wish this bike had that it doesn't is emergency lights Four ways would be kind of cool, especially at night if you do break down. And um, one thing that really bothers me on this thing is the factory coolant reservoir. You can't really tell how much is in it. You can't really access it. To get a good look at it, you really got to take the plastics off on the passenger side or the right hand side. I think that's a poor design. Um, even shining a flashlight into the reservoir, you don't get a good look at it. Yeah. 
so it's kind of hard to tell how much is in it. I just check it every so often, pull the plastic off, at least pull it back a little bit so you can look. Um, yeah, not a fan of that at all. And the factory skid plate. In my opinion, the factory skid plate was useless. Why would you bolt? Why would you bolt something to something you're trying to protect like that? But I did. I want to address that issue pretty soon, and that was one of the first things at the market besides the aero decat that I did. The skid plate on these are not good. Um, if you're road riding, the occasional fire road, you'll be fine. Dirt roads, you're free fine. If you're actually going to trail these bikes or do any type of PDRs, uh, actual off-road, skid plate's not going to work. It's just terrible, in my opinion. Uh, that's all I have for my list, so what else? This is a, another known issue with these bikes, it's the cold start. Um, the cat, the cat and the Rottweiler performance intake did not help it, did not hurt it, didn't make it worse. So I guess that's just pure mapping on KTM's issue. They haven't come up with an update um, that I know, but it kind of sucks not having to, or having to start your bike three times just to get it to run when it's actually cold. This particular bike I haven't had too many issues with. Sometimes it'll fire up and it'll just kill itself. And then once I hit the start button again, it fires right off, full cylinders fire. But I have had this multiple times where it starts on one cylinder and then you'll actually hear it come up and the second cylinder will like spit and sputter and then fully catch. Um, and it does pop a little bit through the exhaust. Um, going back to the aero decat, uh, biggest Thing, biggest reason I did that was the excess heat by the rear shock. Um, oh, one thing I did forget. The factory steering stabilizer works pretty good. I know a lot of people do the Scots, but maybe I'm not riding hard enough. I don't know, but I do like it. I don't get any bar shake on the highway. I don't get any bar shake going down the trails, going through sand. I love it. Um, factory clutch is pretty good. Um, probably will change that in the near future. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for clicking in. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll get uh, answer those as quick as possible. Um, awesome. Don't forget to like and subscribe and watch some other videos on the channel. See you next time.